Oh, I don't doubt you for a moment. The males in my species are very similar. If they're not busy gaslighting you, they're threatening you with murder. Ah, uh, oh no. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yes, I watched every single episode of Disney Marvel's brand new smash hit series, Secret Invasion, so you don't have to. And when I say smash hit series, what I actually mean is it's a series that makes you want to smash something across your head until your retinas physically can't absorb light anymore. What the hell? So today I'm breaking down exactly why it is that I believe that you should do almost anything other than waste your time watching Secret Invasion. Now I have already covered episode one, but I've taken that video down. I'm going to take a couple of clips from that, put it into this video to get us all up to speed, and then we're going to take a look at the rest of the season. And spoiler alert, it's uh, it's not fabulous. It's uh, no, it's it's it, it's not great. All we can turn to are the people we care about. But what if those people weren't who we thought they were? Yeah, this, this opener's not the strongest. It, it, it sounds like it was written by an imaginative 10 year old. You know, for a 10 year old, great. This is, you know, this is good stuff. For an adult writer, not so much. What if the ones closest to us, the ones we've trusted our whole lives? Yes? What, what about them? What might they be? We're someone else entirely. Oh, right. What exactly are you talking about? Chaos, and that's only the beginning. Wait, what? There's, there's more than chaos. What are we talking here? A ruckus, perhaps, or me, or maybe even shenanigans. If you think that joke was childish, good. That's the point I'm trying to make. This dialogue is garbage so far. Sounds like it was written by a toenail. And personally, I don't get why everyone's so pissed about the fact that the intro sequence is AI generated. I mean, the entire script so far sounds like it was as well. If you told me that phase four was an AI generated social experiment to see how quick they could get people to fall out of love with the MCU, I'd believe you. I'd actually believe you. <laughs> a couple of characters have mentioned to Fury about how he's changed since the blip. Well, it turns out that he's doomed to have this conversation with absolutely every single character that he comes into contact with. But after the blip, you were different. The fact that you don't know tells me all I need to know about this new, rather old Nick Fury. I think Thanos' snap changed you. You're not ready for this, Fury. There's a very real threat out there. You were never the same after the blip. I suppose this is confirmation though that the script wasn't written by AI because at least AI would have written a new conversation. Hey, got him. Okay, now we're all on the same poorly written page. Onto episode two and it kicks off in the mid 90s. And this was back when Nick Fury promised to find the scroll another planet for them to inhabit. But in the meantime, they have to assume human form and live peacefully on Earth. And I will say that this is one of the slightly more convincing examples of de-aging I've seen recently. Uh, you know, it did, it did look too weird or creepy, but uh, if only the plot of Secret Invasion was as convincing as young Nick Fury. So then flash forward and we're now in the present day, just moments after Maria Hill was unalived in what was possibly one of the most limp ejections of what is a reasonably well beloved character, a character that's been around for more than 10 years now at this point, and Nick, very much like his name suggests, is furious and he won't be taken alive, God damn it. God damn it, he's just been taken alive. Well, I'm reluctant to say taken, actually. More like herded like a geriatric sheep. how the mighty hath fallen. I sure hope this whole old Nick Fury thing doesn't become a recurring theme throughout this season, he says, facetiously, in a foreshadowing manner. Now, the title sequence obviously sparked a lot of controversy as it was AI generated, but what I found even more irritating than that was how long it is. I mean, sure, you can just skip over it, but do you want to take a guess how long it runs for? Two minutes, two whole minutes, just for a few names and a secret invasion logo. So it's too long and devoid of content. In that case, I guess you could argue that this is the perfect title sequence for such a show. 
Got him. But for real, if you then factor in the more than five minutes of credits at the end of the episode, 15% of each episode is just titles. You know, I'm not making the argument that people shouldn't be credited for their work on a show, but is eight minutes really necessary? Really? Also, I do remember when the first episode dropped, hearing a lot of people saying things like, Oh, Maria isn't dead. We didn't actually see her die. She's gonna come back. And yeah, well, I hope that copium worked. Because no, turns out she is actually dead. And Maria Hill's mom is giving fury of oh, good old talking to her about it. I don't know what Maria died for out there, but whatever it was, don't let it be for nothing. And it was at this moment that Nick Fury realized that a character who's been around since the start of the MCU died because this mediocre show needed a motive for its protagonist. I wish someone would come along and shoot me just like they did Maria. So it turns out there's a high society, Freemasons, Illuminati style soiree pulling all the strings behind the goings on in the world. And this little group is comprised of high-ranking individuals, including the likes of the Prime Minister of the UK, the Secretary General of NATO, and Marvel's rendition of Tucker Carlson. So you've got the Prime Minister, the Secretary General of NATO, and, uh, and, a, and a Fox News anchor. <laughs> okay, bit of an odd bunch. And of course, it wouldn't be a Disney Marvel production without a bit of pseudo-intellectual conversation, would it? Better to behave as a human than as a dog. I quite like dogs. Yeah, so do I. That doesn't mean I go around sniffing buttholes and shitting on people's lawns. I only do one of those things, but I'll never tell. Jokes aside though, what are you on about, mate? Dogs aren't hypocrites. And they don't lie. No, mainly because they don't have the capacity to talk because they're dogs. You know, might I remind you, you could also assign all of those characteristics to a house brick. What's your point? What is this guy talking about? And they don't go out of their way to degrade and destroy their own habitat. I don't know. You ever seen a dog tear up a lawn before? You know what I'm saying? Hold on a moment. Because these people might resemble humans, but they're actually Skrull. So what we have here is actually a bunch of aliens dressed up as humans, lecturing each other about human deforestation. <laughs> I tell you what, say what you like about phase four and phase five, but this is peak Marvel people. They don't get better than this. So, Mr. I Love Dogs, he wants to start a coup of sorts. He wants to mobilize all of the scroll to take over the Earth and make it their planet. But uh, to be honest, I'd like to go back to the conversation about dogs if we could, because whatever he's talking about now, I can't understand a word he's saying. If I had another android like you, I could take on the universe. <coughs> what? If I had another android like you, I could take on the universe. Look, the majority of my family are Welsh, and I still can't understand a word of what he just said. But never mind that, because it's time to catch up with our old friend, Colonel Rhodes, who's at a hearing to discuss the attack in Moscow, and he's taking things as seriously as you might imagine. Slovakia rolls its eyes at me one more time, I'm gonna put on the suit and carpet bomb it. Uh, <laughs> bit of a weird flex there. Uh, bit of a random dig at Slovakia, <laughs> of all places. Very, very topical, Disney. Well written. I mean, I know that this, you know, I know that he's a scroll and therefore wouldn't be acting fully like Colonel Rhodes, but someone still wrote that joke. Well, I mean, <laughs> oh, classic bit of Marvel banter there, guys. You sound frustrated. What's the matter? Croatia talking crap? Slovakia. Well, carpet bomb near ass. You remember the classic Marvel jokes, right? The, look at me, I'm, I'm going to carpet bomb Slovakia. <laughs> you remember them, because you do. Anyway, it then seems as though episode two is gonna end with a half decent conclusion, but then it cuts away from the seriousness and instead we've got to watch Nick Fury kiss his lizard wife. Nice, that's, that's, that's nice. Episode three was a little bit better and by that I mean at least something actually happened. The duplication scene we saw in the trailer, I mean, you know, it's fairly simple in today's standards, but it still looked pretty good. And this is the first time in the show that the cogs began to spin and it began propelling towards something. So Nick Fury and good lizard man number one are trying to foil a nuclear launch with the help of Amelia Clark's character, who is Good Lizard's man's daughter. But as a result of this mission, Amelia Clark's character gets shot by the big bad guy, which is a, a big shock moment, I suppose. Uh, but even more shocking than that is the way that she was caught in the first place. I 
I mean, you could have just driven round him. And, you know, and why are you driving with your headlights off? You might say, oh, but Johnny, she, she's trying to sneak out of a base. She's got to be, she's got to be discreet. Yeah, I don't know if you know this. Fun fact about motorbikes, not the quietest things in the world. I don't think having your headlight on would have made a whole lot of difference. But I tell you what, forget that. What would have been even cooler is, is if he just like popped on the headlights and she just crashed straight into the front of the car, gone tumbling over the top and she's like lying there all crumbled up on the floor like, eh, eh, eh. and then the bad guy just comes along without a word and just goes, pow, pow. that would have been way cooler. You know what? I'm starting to think I should become a writer. Marvel, if you need someone on the writing staff, I'm here. I can, you know, I take Marvel from like a three out of 10 to like a, a super, super solid 3.25. Maybe even a 3.3. I'm just saying. Then episode 4 kicks off with uh, an alright, if not slightly predictable opening. Amelia Clark's character, who was uh, shot dead at the end of the last episode, surprise, surprise, isn't dead. Because she used the big evil lizard man's machine to turn herself into a super scroll. That's actually what they call them. Which might seem like a decent justification for this deus ex machina. But if you start to think about it for a second, it immediately crumbles. I mean, for example, it's awfully convenient that she didn't get the second make sure they're dead shot. I mean, you know, when bad guys shoot someone, they always go for the pat pat. You, you got the first one to kill them, and then the other one to make sure they're dead, the pat pat. But she just got the pat. Ridiculous. That never happens. Not only that, but her, her body was just left there in the middle of the road. I might remind you, this isn't the middle of nowhere. She's right outside the door of the scroll community. She's on the road. I mean, they could do a clearing her off so they can get in a nap. No, they just leave her there. They could have moved her literally anywhere else would have been a different story. But now, thanks to these conveniences, the plot is still on track. Are you as excited as I am? Good, 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 good. But anyway, moving away from the caca, because next, a scene transpires that's actually pretty decent. It's a scene between Nick Fury and his wife. Now, the whole time they've been married, obviously he's been well aware that she is a Skrull, but it's only very recently that he's learned of her plan to, or rather, her orders to kill him. And it's a very candid, authentic conversation between the two. You understand the betrayal that Fury feels and the conflict within his wife. I didn't know quite how this interaction would end, and it made for one of the better drama scenes I've seen from Marvel in a long, long time. However, if I were to intentionally punch you in the face and then tell you how oh so very sorry I am, I'm still not getting an invite to your birthday party, am I? You picking up what I'm putting down? Then the episode ends in what is, uh, you know, a, a fairly decent action scene. It's a little silly and it did drag on for a while and I have no idea how everyone wasn't dead by the end of it, but it was serviceable. And overall, I'd say this is the best episode so far, though that's not much of a compliment. One thing I will say is though, it might, in principle, it might sound cool, but the whole super scroll thing, I don't, a bit of a cop out, really. I mean, like, so the scroll can look like anyone else, and now they can have powers like anyone else too. Like I say, it might sound cool, but in practice, it's it, it's just paving the way for a lot of laziness. Like things just happen because scrolls can. Why did why did that thing happen? Oh, because because super scrolls. Deal with it. So on to episode five, which starts with a fairly decent plot twist, and that's that the big evil lizard man, his henchmen, have begun a mutiny. They've risen up against him, and they're actively trying to kill him. It's quite interesting, right? But how, how would they pull off such a thing? What machines of war did they bring to take this man down? A singular plastic bag. Not one of the 20 odd operatives considered a firearm. Instead, they went with a bin liner. I mean, okay, sure, one guy brought a hammer, fat load of use that did, and surprise, surprise, they didn't actually manage to kill him. My goodness, who ever saw that coming? But don't worry, guys. Because I'm, you know, you might not have killed him, but I'm sure you taught him the importance of reusing his plastic bags. Also, the big bad going down the whole weekend defender, oi, oi, let's have a scrap down the match with the lads kind of attitude. Yeah, not, not, not very intimidating, not gonna lie. Who wants it? Huh? What do you want, Sam? Huh? You want Sam? What the old supermo? You want Sam? If you want Sam, I'll give it you. You want to do it, mate? You know what? I was on board with the character of Sonya. I liked the idea of this sharp-witted, competent female who was threatening because of what she knew, not because of what she could physically do. Mm? I was on board. Right up until this line. Let us go, or I'll kill her. Oh, I don't doubt you for a moment. The males in my species are very similar. 
If they're not busy gaslighting you, they're threatening you with murder. Really? Oh, for God's sake. Are we still doing this? Really? Oh, come on. I have met an astonishing amount of men in my life. An astonishing number of men. And not one of them is known for threatening women with murder. <laughs> and then gaslighting. Gaslighting is a psychological tool used by those with such a disposition and has nothing to do with being male or not. Why are we making very clumsy statements about just shy of 4 billion people? Can I ask for just a little bit of nuance? <laughs> just a little bit, please. I like Sam Jackson very much, and I like the character Nick Fury, as do a lot of people. But this old Nick Fury, trawler man, Nick Fury, I'm not so sure. You know, it, 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 it kind of spoils what made Fury such a special character. Fury has to keep up with superheroes, and he isn't super. He, so, you know, he has to rely on everything else. He has to be sharper, wittier, always one step ahead. He's strong, competent. But in this, people just talk to him like he's a child. Try and get a nap. You seem a little grumpy. How's the saying go? You, uh, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself on Disney+. Plus. It's uh, something like that. Then, episode 5 ends with the return of the old Nick Fury. Supposedly. And by, and by the old Nick Fury, I mean the old Nick Fury back when he was younger. The, the younger Nick Fury who I'm... You know what I mean? At least that's certainly what it seems like they're going for. I certainly hope this scene doesn't go to waste. He says once again, facetiously, and in a foreshadowing manner. So, episode 6. The finale. And Nick Fury heads deep into Skrull territory in the plans to meet up with the big evil lizard man. And he's going to hand him the Avengers DNA in the hopes that he'll leave Earth alone. Now, I'm not going to lie, I didn't actually see this plot twist coming. This could be for one of two reasons. One, good writing. Or two, I'm so clocked out at this point, I wasn't really paying attention. I'll let you make your minds up about that one. But it turns out that Nick Fury wasn't Nick Fury this whole time. And it was actually Amelia Clark's character disguised as Nick Fury. Mind explosivo. I know. So they both end up in the machine, which means they both end up with all of the Avengers powers all at once. Now, that might sound kind of stupid, but trust me, it's nowhere near as stupid as it looks. Here is a clip from the fight preceding these events. I promise you that I have not edited this in any way whatsoever. This is taken directly from the episode. <laughs> What the hell am I looking at? She looks like she's been jacking off for two straight centuries. <laughs> Why does it look so weird? It's like, it's, it's too short or something? I don't know what's wrong with that arm, but it looks hilarious. So if that wasn't the real Nick Fury, then where is the real Nick Fury? Well, the real Nick Fury is currently trying to convince the president that Colonel Rhodes isn't actually Colonel Rhodes and that he is, in fact, a scroll imposter. The fate of the entire planet rests on Fury being able to convince him. So it begs the question, why doesn't Sonya just shoot him? immediately proving Fury's case, as upon his death, he turned back into a scroll. But no, instead, they string it out for the sake of building tension, but it makes no goddamn sense. Also, Amelia Clark's character and Big Evil Lizard Man are still fighting. Now, you might think that the fact that they have all of the Avengers' different powers and that they can use them, uh, you know, each at will is cool, but it's, it's just not. They're both basically invincible, so there's no real stakes to the fight. And are we now suggesting that we can clone superheroes? You know, I, I know that the multiverse kind of messed with everything, but does, isn't this completely law shattering? The fact that we can just make superheroes, and not just clone superheroes, clone superheroes with every single power, not just one of them. Surely this destroys the law of the entire superhero universe. And ultimately that just diminishes what's special about superheroes. I mean, to be fair though, that is what phase four and phase five is all about, isn't it? Diminishing what's special about superheroes. Got him. So what's the outcome of this Dragon Ball Z style battle of attrition? Well, Amelia Clark's character wins. Why? No idea. She just does. She didn't outsmart him. She didn't outmaneuver him. Nothing like that. She just beats him because of the story. There, there was no plot twist, no great reveal. She just kills him and, that, and that's it. And if you can't get enough of ridiculous circumstances, don't worry. They've got you covered. As Colonel Rhodes tries to escape and Fury does what Sonya should have done about 15 minutes ago. I promise you, there's no grand reveal. There's no subversive plotline that's been running throughout the whole show and it's been right there in front of your eyes and you just couldn't see it. No, none of that. The, the good guys just win because the good guys win. And that's it. They just do. Deal with it. 
Like, I don't know what kind of paper the initial plot for this show was written on, but I can tell you what kind of crayon it was written in. It was one of them fat, chunky Crayola coloring crayons. And then Nick Fury and Amelia Clark did a thing and they all live happily ever after. I wrote it. And then, just when you think the ending can't get any worse, I mean, it doesn't, but it gets a whole lot harder to watch. And we have to watch Nick Fury making out with his gremlin wife again. Oh, isn't it sweet? In conclusion, episode one was meh. Episode two was meh. Episode three was bleh. Episode four was actually okay. Episode five was meh. And episode six was just what? Uh, and there you go. I mean, by no means was this the worst offering from Marvel in the last, you know, couple of years, at least Phase 4 and Phase 5, but by no means was it the best. I think that this should be renamed from Secret Invasion to Public Mediocrity. Once again, got him. You know what? I could easily recommend to you that you just watch Episode 4, but that would also mean that you'd need to watch Episodes 1, 2, and 3 to get the context that you'd need to enjoy Episode 4, so I can't even do that. I can't even recommend the best episode to you. I I'd recommend Hawkeye over this show. Can't believe I just said that out loud, but I did. And there we go. Thank you for joining me in this video. I'll see you in the next one. And of course, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We have the top tiers, the Knights of Law. We've got Flunky, Pozzabon, Infinite Dum Dum, Koss, Jax, David, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael, Michael Terpia, Steve the Goat, David, Digital EXE, Saint Nemo, Daggerty69, nice. And of course, Kenneth, Dogramachi. To each and every one of you, thank you so much for the support that you show me. It's great to have you. Thank you. Tier 2s, we've got Say, Dr. Malski, Yonwich, Hadziu, Mendicum Bias, Sensei Fang, Mark Maidens, Rich Welwick, Michael S, Nystagmus, Michael and Jarek, and the Grand Admiral. And of course, a big thank you to each and every one of the Tier 1s as well. To everyone on this list, your support means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You probably won't, now I've stuffed all that Marvel garbage down your throat. But there we go. Until the next time, guys, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon.